Big Tech's ordinance has everything from complete firearms to OEM and aftermarket parts. If you're looking to put together your first AR-15, they have everything from those parts that you need to the tools that are going to be essential. If you're looking for suppressors, night vision, handheld lights, weapon lights, sights or optics, you name it, Big Tech's has it all. Not only that, they're offering all those brands that we like. Go visit them at BigTechsOrdinance.com. Lucky Gunner carries ammo for sale and only offers in-stock cheap ammo with fast shipping. Whether you're looking for rifle ammo, handgun ammo, rimfire ammo, or shotgun ammo, you've come to the best place on the internet to find it all in stock and ready to ship. Lucky Gunner also has the popular Lucky Gunner Labs, which provides side-by-side comparisons of the best defensive ammunition available today. If you need ammo, and really we all do, check out luckygunner.com. Overwatch Precision is a team of civilians and combat veterans based in Phoenix, Arizona, that employ industry-leading production methods, coatings, and materials in their striker-fired polymer-framed pistol trigger systems. With an internal engineering team focused on thoughtful design, Overwatch's flat-faced and curved triggers safely deliver a mechanical advantage to your carry or duty Glock, Walther, CZ, P10, and Smith & Wesson MMP 2.0 with improved function and increased accuracy. See more at overwatchprecision.com. Filster makes awesome holsters. But not only that, they also happen to be one of those companies that are trendsetters. A lot of their designs are emulated by other companies. Not only does Filstered make those holsters, but they also provide concealment systems like the Enigma, the Flex. They also have a lot of solutions when it comes to concealment solutions for medical. If you need to have a concealment first aid kit, they happen to sell them. Check them out at filsterholsters.com. Are you a professional looking for a reliable and high-quality rifle suppressor? Look no further than Primary Arms Government, whether you're equipping a team or shopping for your personal rifle. Primary Arms Government offers a complete selection of field-proven suppressors with options to fit any rifle and any budget. They work directly with the industry's leading brands to secure the best prices and available inventory, and their expert staff is always available to answer any questions you may have. Don't compromise on the safety and effectiveness of your equipment. Choose Primary Arms Government for all your suppressor needs. Visit them online today at primaryarms.com slash government. Walther is the performance leader in the firearms industry, renowned throughout the world for its innovation since Carl Walther and his son Fritz created the first blowback semi-automatic pistol in 1908. Today, the innovative spirit builds off the invention of the concealed carry gun with the PPK series by creating the PPQ, PPS, and the Q5 match steel frame series. Military, police, and other government security groups in every country of the world have rely on the high-quality craftsmanship and rugged durability of Walther products. Walther continues its long tradition of technical expertise and innovation in the design and production of firearms. For more information, visit WalterArms.com. Hey everyone, Matt Lanfair here with Primary and Secondary. Welcome to Modcast. Today's episode is 383. We're going to be talking about rights given away. See, like how I did that? I so like you it. thought I was kind of, yeah. Uh, today's I mean, date is April 15th. Yeah. I was going to say, with the exception of you bumping into your camera. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. You're well, like, it's still uh, now, we, now we have to start over again. You just oh, ruined it, Ava. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> um, so one of the big topics that unfortunately a lot of people like to talk about, but they don't like to do much about our rights mm-hmm. and especially in our specific demographic gun rights, gun rights, kind of important. I don't know, but some people don't think it's that important. Some people like to have this, um, this big presence and, and talk a big game, but when it comes down to actually doing anything, it doesn't happen. And so I've been following what Ava has been doing and she's been actively actually doing things, attending various hearings and speaking out and actually making friends with various people. And I'm not seeing enough people doing that. And I thought, you know what, this would be a good discussion, share, share her journey, what she's been doing. And even though there may be some, there may be um, speed bumps, there might be some things that have occurred recently that are not in anyone's favor. It's good to talk about it because, well, Colorado kind of isn't that gun gun friendly anymore. It it, it used to be, 
but things change. And I, I blame California. Not yeah. really, but it's, it's, well, it's a, well, it's I mean, a I've, I've told this to so many people, people are like, well, just move. And yeah, what that doesn't realize, work. no, it doesn't. And what people don't realize is they're using all of these gun laws, these bills as a blueprint and they're, it's spreading. I mean, yep. if we're not going to stop it in one state, it's going to spread to other states. Yes. At this point, I feel very confident saying that no state is safe. I've, you know, yeah. constantly repeated that. And, you know, and so moving, moving might buy you a few extra years, but ultimately you're going to be faced with this. So, Absolutely. you know, you don't want to just hand over your state on a silver platter. Everybody needs to come together and fight, whether you're in Colorado or outside yep. Colorado, it's in everyone's best interest to fight this. Absolutely. Texas is way yeah. more purple than it was not too long ago. And mm -hmm. it's a slow, slow change. So Ava, you have Peaches, who is your sidekick, who hopefully is asleep. She is. Do you want me to wake her up again? So she no, can make I think a... that is just mean. Peaches is, a, Peaches is a dog. It's not a person. It's, it's not a she's cat. on my lap right dog. now. She's just a cute little, she's kind of like a cat. Chihuahua? She's, yeah. Well, yeah, she's half Chihuahua. What's the other half? Um, Poodle. <laughs> I did the one of those DNA tests and I feel like I got the wrong DNA test. <laughs> so she's German and English and Japanese. And yeah, actually, yeah, no, exactly. that, that's my kids. My kids are that and Swedish. Um, nice. So how'd you start in all this stuff? So, um, so as people may or may not know, so my dad's dragon man, which I only started coming out and saying that as of like the last year, because mm -hmm. I started off and wanted to make my own name for myself and didn't want to piggyback off of his name or have his views. You know, um, I mean, sometimes I've joked, I'm like, he's a little bit of a pure nightmare at times. Cause he doesn't bite his tongue. He's like Donald Trump on Twitter, but I didn't want any of his views to negatively affect me. And I just yep. want to be my own person. Absolutely. Um, but so essentially, so I was, I was born and raised around guns, but I never really cared for guns that much. Grew up pretty girly. When I turned 18, I went to school in New York City. I lived there for eight years, graduated in three years, double major, uh, ended up working for the New York Yankees, um, mm. did quite a bit of stuff in my, you know, my early adulthood. And uh, at one point I flew back to Colorado to help my parents, my dad and my mom film a reality TV show and uh regarding their business and sadly um my mom so the week before she passed away she passed away now um it's been 12 years um she she the week before she passed away she showed me how to shoot a gun on camera oh and she was a firearms instructor herself you know it was actually pretty accurate but i think most women in general are it doesn't yes, they are. like you know i mean most women are pretty good shots um, after she passed away, I, my whole life changed. Like mm -hmm. I moved back to Colorado. I wanted to help my dad with the family business. And I was determined to, you know, not let this business that my mom spent more than half of her life building up to just, yeah. you know, go to crap. And so then that's when I started learning as much as possible about guns. I wanted to get more training, but I realized very quickly that there weren't a lot of females out there to to train other women. Yeah. So I ended up getting my instructor credentials from a bunch of different guys. Like I went through different, you know, different schools um, and, and NRA counselors just to see what their perspectives were and how they trained and stuff. And a lot of them were very like drill sergeant-esque or like yeah. super old that like just did not resonate with me. Um, but long story short, I became a firearms instructor. I was not going to have a career in firearms. It was just something to preoccupy my time and be sort of a resource for anybody who came to the store and wanted training, which also included men who didn't have any experience and didn't want to have like a, can I say bad words on this? I okay. guess just this once. Well, okay. <laughs> who didn't want to have a measuring contest with the yeah. next guy, you know? And, um, and so I, I did have a lot of guys also that were learning for the first time and they just didn't want any egos involved. And then after that, I eventually started a podcast like a few years down the road and my podcast has taken off. It's, it's still around gun funny. I think I'm going on my seventh year hmm. and then, um, started becoming pretty active on social media and still am. And that kind of took off. Um, also created a YouTube channel and then also a second podcast as of this year called Pew Pew Panel. And then I also write for various magazines. So at this point, I have my hands in everything. Yeah. I've also become an investor of three gun stores and gun ranges. And 
I don't know. And then as of recently, well, I'd say last year is when it started. I drank the freaking political Kool-Aid and I can't stop. <laughs> That's a good thing because it's making it up is. for so much inaction. Yeah. So many people talk a big game, but you're making up for that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So what were your first steps with that? So last year, the assault weapons ban bill was introduced and yeah. that was like a huge rude awakening where it was like, wait, what? And I, I, I read through the bill and I realized, okay, this isn't just like you're, you know, trying to ban your common ARs and AKs. Like it was essentially trying to ban majority of guns, yeah. anything that had any semi-automatic pistol that had a detachable magazine along with other characteristics such as an adjustable stock, a barrel shroud, a muzzle brake, a threaded barrel. I mean the um, shoulder thing that grip. goes up? Yeah. No, okay. the shoulder thing that you can just adjust for length of pull. Because that, you're just that's so you're much like, more dangerous. No, it totally increases lethality. I could totally understand the reasoning here. And I was like, this bill is so broad, like either a total yeah. idiot wrote this or a total genius because yeah. it's so broad that is going to affect so many other guns and it will absolutely put my parents business out of business and once again like i feel like you know by sticking up for these bills like i'm not only protecting the family business but i'm also protecting my mom's legacy true and then in addition to that i mean my i mean i eat breed and you know whatever sleep guns and that also is affecting my livelihood yeah. and i've i've trained so many women um because i'm still a firearms instructor and i'm going on 12 years I've trained so many women that, you know, used to be anti-gun that are suddenly faced with a threat, you know, teachers who yeah. uh, have somebody, you know, I, I mean, I've had more people cry in my class because they're just like, well, this doesn't feel right. Like it goes everything against them, mm -hmm. but they realize it's important to have a gun and they suddenly, you know, take the red pill and realize what the hell, like we've all realized for the yeah. past years. And so I feel like I'm also fighting for all these women to be able to protect themselves and- True. So yeah, I'd say the assault weapons ban bill that was introduced last year uh, went up to the Capitol, testified, I was rallying people up. And I saw that like my efforts were actually not falling on deaf ears. And I also realized that there just aren't a lot of organizations out there that are helpful for the average person that doesn't know anything about politics. So I personally, mm. I, I wish I paid more attention in school on, okay, so it goes from like, wait, like even just the what's involved in order to vote on a bill. You know, there's seven steps just because it passes one chamber does not mean that that is going to become law now. But I didn't know any of this. And and so when I was looking for resources and trying to gain information on, you know, OK, what's what's next? It just wasn't available. And so as I was learning, I was sharing with people out there and letting them know, you know, just like the assault weapons ban bill that we are faced with this year. So it just passed the House and. Yeah. Now it's going on. Now it's heading to the center, uh, Senator, Senate. Uh, I'm sorry, the Senate. Yeah. And, and so people are still scrambling they're thinking that this is law and it's not, we still have time to, you know, right. to fight it. But, um, so I, I, I was just kind of becoming, you know, sort of this echo chamber for whatever I was learning and sort of explaining it in a way very similar to, you know, when I started learning about guns, explaining things that didn't make sense to me, that makes me a better instructor, I think makes me a better activist now because Absolutely. I'm explaining it in terms for the average person to understand. Yeah. And um, and so I, I realized that my efforts weren't going unnoticed, that people were actually acting when I was like, hey, we need to contact these people. Hey, guys, like sign up to testify. We need as many people at the Capitol as possible. And people were actually doing it. And that was really rewarding. And last year we were able to fight the quote unquote assault weapons ban. Yeah. And I feel pretty confident that we can still do it, but we definitely need a lot of people helping. And, you know, I sit here and I'm like, wow, people are receptive to my message, but then there's so many people that these yeah. people, I almost wish they weren't even gun owners. Yeah. Like I, I've never been so disgusted with yeah. certain people because they're incredibly complacent. They think that it's not going to pass. They think that if it does pass, they're not going to comply. The assault weapons ban bill initially, the first uh, the first time that you would be fined um, going against, you know, I guess if you were to buy a gun that is banned, you would be slapped with a $250,000 fine. Mm -hmm. $250,000. So yeah, go ahead and tell me you're not going to comply. But when you're slapped with a $250 fine and now you have to you're not going to pay that 
that's going to affect so many other things. Like yeah. this is, this isn't something to be taken lightly and the whole shall not comply thing is much easier said than done. Absolutely. And then as far as, you know, people are like, I'll just move. So you would rather move than actually stand up, contact yep. your representative and show up to the Capitol to testify. Like it just, it blows my mind. And then there's other people that just think we don't have a voice. We're not making a difference and it's fallen on deaf ears. And I think of anything, I'm proof that it is not because just on Sunday, Sunday, they had their third hearing um, amongst the, um, the, uh, um, the house. And we had nine Democrats vote against the assault weapons ban. Mm -hmm. And six of those nine were females, which is yeah. hilarious because it shows to me that, you know, their women have more balls than the rest of their colleagues in the well, it's yeah. it's also showing that things are not as well defined as media would have you think. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, clearly the leftist females are anti-gun. Well, maybe not. Well, maybe they also they it kept coming up. I mean, I would say if anybody can tune in and listen to this stuff and you could go back and watch it on YouTube. It's just um, what is it? Colorado government, I think, is the YouTube channel. And over and over again, um, it had been said that, you know, these firearms are very masculine. The AR is masculine. And so a lot of these women were going up and they're just like, mm, no, I have an AR. And yeah. I don't think I'm very masculine. I mean, I don't have my gun wall behind me, but I'm sure a lot of people who follow me on social media have seen my gun wall. And that's not even all of my guns. And let me tell you, I I think I'm pretty feminine. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, and then one thing that I want to state is uh, as far as like not making a difference and that at the end of the day, I feel like I got the last laugh on. So I put out on Twitter and I think I also reposted on Instagram. And I said that, you know, if anybody wants to talk about guns, even if it's mom's demand action, yeah, like, you know, I was looking like I would let me backtrack. So I think that everyone at some point should testify against a bill or if nothing else, go up to the Capitol and, and watch this happen. And it is so eye opening. I mean, it essentially, it's a horse and pony show. You think all these people are like respectable. I mean, things got even during the, uh, the, the second and third hearing amongst the, the house, like things got really debated. They had to take a recess. I mean, it's, it's better than any reality TV show that you'll watch and it's actually real. But I think that it's important to watch and see how, you know, what people do, but um, when it comes to a lot of these anti-gun bills, so moms demand action, all these people in red shirts show up, it's mostly women. And a lot of them that are showing up for one, a lot of them fly in for this. They're, they don't actually live in Colorado, but they will tell you that the reason why they do this is because they lost a child due to a mass shooting that like, happened at school or majority of them, majority of them. Uh, there is one that her child actually carried out the shooting, um, but a lot of them have either lost, you know, they've lost somebody yeah. due to a firearm. And so very similar to me, like I was thinking to myself, you know, I hate to say that I'm like them or that they're like me because we're very opposite, but we still have some common ground. Mm -hmm. I'm up here, you know, testifying against these bills because I know that it does save lives. And I'm also trying to carry on my mom's legacy who died horribly in front of me. And, you know, similar to them, like they think that they're making a difference and they're carrying out, say, their child's legacy, trying to make a difference and get these laws, um, you know, passed. And so I put out this this um, this message on social media and I was like, anybody who wants to talk about this, even if it's mom's demand action. And I even shared like I lost my mom. Like I know what it's like to, you know, try to fight for somebody who's not alive. Yeah. And um Maybe a few days after that, um, I was put in touch with a representative. I won't share her name because I don't want her to get, well, actually, you know what? I'm going to share it here because it's not like there's a lot of liberals, you know, watching your show, but her name is Shannon Bird and she's a Democrat and um, she is not in a swing vote uh, district at all. In fact, her district is very Democratic. And so I met with her and um, they had her and her aide, like they had, it was her aide, had lots of questions and um, they were just like, look, we've never shot a gun before. We're not sure mm. how we're going to vote on this. And, um, and I just like told them, you know, all of this stuff. I told them about, for example, Sig Sauer, the Sig Rose P365, the nine millimeter version has a compensator on it. 
according to the definition of a muzzle break, which could be very similar to a compensator, yeah. that gun could be illegal now in Colorado. And I look at how many women have taken up that gun and it's their first gun. I'm part of the Sig Community Rose Group on Facebook. And, you know, how many women are just like so happy that they can protect themselves. Yeah. And it's just created this nice community. And I showed them the Facebook group and I showed them the gun. And I said that, you know, if this passes, like women aren't going to be able to get this gun. Yep. And um, also, you know, came with them with a bunch of facts. So uh, according to FBI 2020, which is the latest data that we have, they broke down the types of murders and murders and homicides are different because they're going to come at you with, you know, homicides means that any gun, whether it was used for good or not, murder is like it was a justified murder. Yep. Yep. And um, what what I found interesting was in this this uh, spreadsheet. So they broke it down among states and what weapon was used. And for 2020, um, only eight murders took place with a rifle, and that wasn't just like an AR or an AK. That just a rifle. Been, yeah, yeah a bolt been a, action. Uh, hunting, yeah, yeah, could have been anything. Um, the previous year, 2019, it was five. Um, with handguns in 2020, it was 40 or 41. And in, how many were suicides? Um, well, I don't know. I don't know if the murder actually, cause I know that. Oh, so yeah, murder like, wouldn't be a suicide, but uh, yeah. yeah, but murder, um, what people don't realize is, or maybe you do, but murder actually makes up more than 50% of deaths, which tells me that we do not have a gun problem. We have a mental health problem. Yeah. Well, and Pat Rogers, we that? yeah, Pat Rogers would say, uh, it's not a gun problem. It's a people problem. And yeah, as, a, as a cop who responds to stuff on a regular basis, and sure, I work in a small town, mm -hmm. but we respond to mental health issues so frequently yeah. and there are no resources. Why are you mm -hmm. calling armed individuals that are not trained in mental health to deal with mental health issues? That's yeah. how bad it is. Because it's not Absolutely. EMS, it's not fire, it's not cops, but yeah. that's who gets called. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I completely agree. Um, the amount of, I'm trying to think, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Um, but the amount of deaths just that occurred by like physical force, like hitting, Hammers? kicking. No, it just literally. Oh, just open hit. Yeah. 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 Outnumbered the amount of deaths. Oh yeah. That, um, here, actually, I just found it. Let me pull it up real quick. This was, I mean, this was like so eye opening. Uh, let's see. So yeah, hands, fist, feet. Mm -hmm. That um, made up for fourteen murders, and then we should outlaw knives, outlaw hands and feet. Knives made up forty murders, and then the only thing that was the most was handguns, which is one hundred and forty-one deaths, and. I feel pretty confident saying that the assault weapons spam bill, um, per the definitions, would probably affect handguns to a degree probably the least, but there's still it's still aimed to probably outlaw 60 plus percent. Yeah. Whereas when you look at shotguns and, and rifles, it's going to be, you know, much higher in the high 80s. Are you familiar with John Hearn? No, I'm not. So John has a wonderful uh, presentation talking about these stats and how mm -hmm. they're fairly inaccurate and yeah. the stats are actually higher. And he, he covers some, some other resources to look over uh, that can help enhance that, enhance mm -hmm. your, your information. And it's not necessarily, it, and it's not necessarily pinning down the, the specific weapons. It's just overall death rates. And it's really interesting to find out how many like missing persons and how many uh, unreported assaults and things like that. And uh, yeah, those stats aren't necessarily the most accurate. And so yeah. a lot of people put a lot of faith in that. And you know what? There's there's more to this than. Exactly. And there's it's crazy how many how many organizations like every town, how they fudge these numbers and the definitions. And it's yes. Well, that's one of the a... issues that we're running into those definitions uh, yeah. uh, again on this on the cop side. Uh, we recently changed up the federal uh, reporting system. Well, not recently. Uh, a couple of years ago, there was a basically there was a change in definitions and that skewed uh, crime stats hmm. because those definitions now are slightly changed. And then also Hearn brings up uh, some really interesting stuff about how if there's a really nice rich neighborhood or a rich city 
mm-hmm. um, they're probably going to be more likely to adjust things so it doesn't look as bad. So instead of being some kind of like an aggravated assault, it's just a little B minor or a B misdemeanor yeah. assault. Yeah. So yeah. Interesting. Um, I do want to note so that woman that I was working with, yeah, um, uh, Rep. Bird. So she did vote no against the assault weapons ban bill, and I honestly like I just felt so accomplished. And I know we, we still lost. I think it was 27 to 35. Still. We had nine Democrats that voted against it. And that's still like more than we would have thought. So we are making a difference. Well, uh, imagine too, if more people did what you did. I know. And were able to reach out. Yeah, I know. And even so just now, before I jumped on, I was reporting another show and, um, and I was making a list of all these senators now that I'm like, I'm going to go and talk to them because I think that, just the fact, and I hate to play the female card because I'm just like, well, you know, like I it hate works. pain, you know, sex, race, whatever. At the end of the day, we're all Americans. But I do think that there is a lot of pull in females that show that like I'm a gun owner and yeah. I use these guns for protection. And and also being somebody who I'd like to think I'm well-spoken depending on the day and how much the I've hour. received. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> how much I've had a drink now. Um but I would like to think that, you know, I'm well-spoken, I'm well-put-together, and to show them that, like, you know, gun owners aren't just these, like, hillbillies or these old yes. white men. Yes. The face of gun ownership has greatly, you know, changed, especially after 2020, yeah. when it's mostly minorities and females that are buying these guns. And it does affect your constituents. Like, people that voted for you to put you in office are now gun owners. Yeah. And, um, Yeah. So I do think, I think there's a lot to be said about being professional and talking to people. Mm -hmm. And I think that this holds true with a lot. I mean, I, I am guilty of like going on Twitter X and trolling, you know, like Elizabeth Epps, who is the sponsor, the bill sponsor for the assault weapons bill, Timmy Hernandez, who claims that, you know, he's the first Gen Z elected, which he wasn't even elected. His seat was given to him. I can't stand that kid. And then, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, something Garcia. She just now um, took on the, she sponsored the bill through the Senate. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, those people are so far gone that I'm like, there's no, if anything, I just troll them and show like how much they, you know, idiots. themselves. Yeah. yeah. But that said, I, I feel pretty confident saying that like not all, all Democrats are like these people. And I yeah. think we need to get away from the fact that we just assume that all Democrats are bad people. Amen. Because a lot of them are, you know, a lot of them are just really doing what they think is best. What they think is best, yes. Different. Yeah. And and a lot of people are willing to hear what the, you know, what the stats are, that hard evidence, and then make their decision as opposed to just being, well, I'm a Democrat and I should be anti-gun and I'm going to vote accordingly. Because as we've seen, there's a lot of people that don't think like that. Yep. And I think it's important that we thank those people too. I put together an email list of those nine Democrats that voted um, against this bill so that people could reach out, gunners can reach out and thank them. Cause I think that's important too, is to show appreciation in class. Absolutely. Well, and, and one of the things that I brought up, it might've been a year or two ago is that the, the people that are elected to office are by Mm -hmm. no means our leaders. They Mm -hmm. are our representatives. So we shouldn't be looking to them for guidance. We need to be guiding them. And so if people are just kind of listening to what's going on and going, okay, yeah. Okay. I'll just go with that. No, yeah. you need to be telling them what you want. And unfortunately, exactly. we we live in a we live in a time where everything has to be an extreme, and it mm-hmm. sucks. I know, but I, yeah, I agree. You, you still need to make sure your voice is heard. You know how much uh, negative feedback I got though when I said, you know, I didn't say her name. And, but I was just like, look, guys, this is proof that like talking to somebody yes. is effective. And people are like, whatever, you still got played. We still lost. And I mean, just so much and what did they do? back that I got. Yeah. That's what I said. I was like, so what are you doing to help this cause? Like, yes. I genuinely want to know, because for me, even if we lose this cause, I'm not going to go to bed that night thinking I could have done more. And I, and that's how I feel. I mean, yeah, I'm exhausted. I'm not getting paid for this. I've spent, you know, just the other day, I spent eight hours at the freaking Capitol testifying against two anti-gun bills. One got dropped. It was just killed um, yeah. because the sponsor pulled it off because there was so much people, you know, so many people in opposition. Um, and then I spoke to the, that representative and it's like, 
I'm killing myself and holding the weight of so many people. And it would just be nice if one, people showed appreciation, which I'm sure that's how the Democrats and a lot of these Republicans feel. But two, even if you guys got off your butt and did so much as called your representative or emailed them. I'll share a post. Do something. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, and that's why I, I just keep thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, getting out of the gun industry just seems better and better sometimes. And just opening yeah. up a plant store. When oh, I say true. plants, I don't mean marijuana, <laughs> but I'm like, I'm not going to have the ATF, you know, the, potentially have ATF knocking on my door because I do have two FFLs uh, putting me out of business. I don't have to deal with, you know, people voting to put my business out of business. Yeah. Like, it's just like, uh, that would just be great. All I have to worry about is just plants. And if they yeah. get spider mites, that's the worst thing that could happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are but, there any specific I mean, or are there any organizations that you worked with or that have been especially helpful, whether it's so, providing resources to figure out how, what direction to go or you, that you receive direct support or guidance from? So my favorite is Rally for Our Rights. And mm -hmm. the organization is run by Leslie Hollywood, who is a little bit older than me. She is so sweet. She and she's brilliant. And she has been the person that I've reached out to for anything like if i'm confused about something like the second reading on the house floor on friday was so confusing because then they try to push an amendment through and try to get it reversed and um and she's like well that's weird because if i was a democrat i would say this and sure enough that's what the democrats said and and she's very intuitive and like watches these bills where she's like i think this is going to pass i don't think this is going to pass and she's been very accurate she was also extremely level-headed mm -hmm. and i appreciate that um so Rally for Our Rights, and she also has uh, on her website, um, Legislative Watch, where you click on it and it shows all of the bills, what the status is, uh, when you can, you know, if any of these bills are up for a uh, public hearing and you can go and testify. And then it shows like uh, a link to the bill so you can read the bill in its entirety. And it goes, it links directly to the um the website where you can sign up to testify, which by the way, is not an easy task. It's very confusing. Unless you've done it a few times, you're just like, okay, what? Cause you have to click on the committee name and then that number. And if you don't know any of that, you're just like, this is really confusing. And I feel like they do it intentionally to make it difficult so that people can't testify. And um, so she's been really good. RMGO, Rocky Mountain Gun Owners, they've also been putting a lot of effort to fight. I don't know if I always agree with their tactics. Uh, sometimes it's like, okay, let's bully this person into making them yeah. vote a certain way. They've given out like people's cell phone numbers, which regardless of what side, I don't want my cell phone number out there. I don't think, I think we kind of have to think about how we ourselves would be treated. But what I don't understand is like, you can't just bully somebody and then expect them to vote in your favor. Yeah. You know, typically that's going to backfire. Um, I will say that Gunners of America has not been present. They were not present last year. They've not been present this year as far as having their representative come out and testify against these bills. And, you know, with the NRA being as crappy as it is, which people can hate me for that, but I don't think that they're doing that great of a job. Uh, we really need bigger organizations like Gunners of America and Fire and Policy Coalition Firearm, Firearms Policy Coalition was active last year. They're not active this year, although oh. they did they did email me and they were like, hey, if the assault weapons ban passes, do you know people that would be willing to sue? And I was like, yeah, but I was like, are you guys going to help us fight this on a local level so that it doesn't yeah. have to get to that? And they didn't respond. Um, I would think it would be easier to, to, to knock it down before it even reaches that I know. Point. Instead of spending like hundreds of thousands fact. of dollars, I A bunch agree. of attorneys. And, um, but I, I mean, that's not to discredit what they've done oh, no. at a national level, like they're helping us, but it's like, you know, like, where the hell are you guys? And yeah. then NRA has been active. They have one guy, he, uh, from my understanding, broke both legs and has been testifying yeah. remotely. And, uh, and I'm like, you know, for all these big organizations, <laughs> But at this point, I'm not going to complain. I appreciate them even doing more than, I mean, help the NRA is doing more for Colorado than Gun Owners of America and Firearms Policy Coalition. Like, let yeah. that sink in. Yeah. So well, they're all businesses. Point, I know. And at this point, I'm like, I hate to say it, but like, you know, people that aren't getting paid, like me, uh, my sister's been really helpful. I got her involved. Um, I made her drink the Kool Aid. I mean, there's a lot of people that, 
even my friend, I'm like, what are you doing this Friday? We need more female to test, like more females to testify. I'm like, you should come with me. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I'm pulling out every resource I possibly can. Um, in addition to that, so if anybody is listening and they're like, okay, what can we do to help? You do not have to live in Colorado to help us. And I've now comprised a list of potential senators that could potentially vote in our favor. Anybody that I think might be in a swing district or might be leaning towards, you know, helping us. Um, I listed their email addresses really easy. All I have to do is go to gunfunny.com. The homepage on the very top, it says, click here. One click will email all of those senators mm -hmm. and it's BCC. So it's not like it's going to show that bulk email. And that would be greatly appreciated. You know, if, if nothing else, because like I said, if we're not fighting this, it's going to affect us. It's going to affect the, the entire, you know, the entire nation. Yep. Yep. So yeah. Well, I think yeah. there's something to be said, and it's reinforcing what you said earlier, something to be said about being accessible and being willing to talk, because yeah. how many of these people that are against firearms are scared of them or don't know enough, mm -hmm. just like the representative you spoke to. Yeah. And what a great opportunity to teach and to, to gain another friend and another uh, supporter of gun rights. Mm -hmm. And what's crazy is I actually, I really liked, like her and her aide actually yeah. seemed pretty level-headed. Yeah. Like you think, you know, we have this, this pre notion of like what we think Democrats are and we think they're just like these crazy liberals, but like yeah. foaming at the mouth are very moderate, you know, yeah. they're very much like, they kind of stand where we, where a lot of gunners stand. I wouldn't say a lot of gunners are far, or far right. I mean, for the most part, it's like 80% that are very much in the middle. And then like the other 10% on our, the extreme sides. Yep. Um, but I, I think once you guys talk to these people, you'll realize like you have more common ground than you would think. Oh, I believe and it. And it's, it's, it is very eye, eye opening. Like if nothing else, like I've learned so much in the last year and a half, even just going in and, and watching like how a bill is voted on and just seeing, you know, how things happen. And it's pretty entertaining, you know, if nothing else, like if you guys aren't into reality TV, um, <laughs> I would watch these cause it is like. I've gotten everyone involved. Like you're just sitting there essentially just eating popcorn. Cause you're like, Oh man. And then once you get to know the representatives, like I've really gotten to know, like, you know, everyone's name and what's happened with them and some of the drama and stuff. It's like, you're just so invested. It's kind of sad. I know. <laughs> no, not, not, like, not your habit. I was but like, just, I was like, just listen, the general, yeah. Just the general is... atmosphere and how it's being <laughs> I, I interpreted. Was like, I was like, well, this is what happens when you're a single female and you, <laughs> you need that it's drama. Like, yeah, no, it's yeah. Um, Peaches and I am like, Peaches, are you, are you following this? No. <laughs> so what did Peaches say? No, Peaches is totally against it. I mean, okay. she's, she's pro gun all the way. She has her little gun collection and uh, you but know. Is, is she enjoying watching C-SPAN? Yeah. Cause she just gets to sit on my lap. Okay. And sleep. Yeah. Yeah. It's way better than me being active, you know, maybe exercising, working in my yard, you know, something that's outdoor related. This is hence why I look so pale right now and maybe a little overweight because I've just been stress eating and not getting, you know, much vitamin D. <laughs> so do you have a special backpack for peaches? So peaches can go with you to all of these events. No, she actually doesn't like car rides. She gets a little nauseous. Oh, okay. Otherwise I would, because she is, she's, she's very well behaved. Yeah. And she's like my little shadow. Like she'll, as long as she was in a backpack and with me, she'd be totally happy. Yeah. But getting her there is just stressful. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So for someone new to this, they're, they're thinking about, they're, they're seeing there's an issue and they want mm -hmm. to do something. What would you recommend their first step be? So if they're not in Colorado, I would say look for local organizations and see who's actually fighting. And as much as I, don't want to say don't donate. I wouldn't give them money right away until you actually realize. Previously on primary and secondary. So we just had a little pause uh, because, you know, internet's kind of stop at some point. So as we were saying, don't give people money blindly. Yeah. So what people can do. And then, to, you know. Yeah. And then in addition to that, um, I would say it's going to require some footwork on your end. Regarding, I mean, depending on what state you're in, but I would look for local organizations. A lot of these local organizations like RMGO, Rally for Our Rights, they are dedicated only to 
like Colorado, for example. So look for somebody who's dedicated to only your state and you're going to get, you know, they should be giving you all the information necessary to keep you up to date with um, any of the anti-gun bills that are heading your way. Because a lot of people just, they want to help, but they're just, they're not knowledgeable. They don't know what's yeah. going on and, or where to even find that information. Um, so, and then I would also, you know, there's lots of Facebook groups out there. I would also pay attention to who's like really active and vocal and who seems to be making really excellent points and friend them, you know, reach yeah. out to them, ask them questions because I've made so many friends along the way, just this past year that I didn't have previously, mm -hmm. um, specifically lots of women, like so many brilliant women out there that, you know, cause I don't, I don't understand politics in its full entirety. And so I've asked them and they've been extremely helpful. And when it comes to politics, I think there's a lot of people that are willing to educate as long as anyone's willing to, you know, listen and learn. Uh, so I would recommend doing that as well. Yeah. And there is a possibility you might be searching for an organization which doesn't even exist. And it might be up to you to start mm -hmm. it. And if that's the case, if you do find yourself in that position, reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help you find more resources and people to network with to establish something. Um, yeah. Because that would suck. Yeah. A lot of people, the, if the groundwork's already there, why would you want to uh, reinvent the wheel? Well, and I also wonder if maybe a lot of these organizations aren't around because states in the past have been predominantly red states yes. and they haven't had it. But that's the issue is we're all taking these rights. Texas. For granted. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. I mean, even Arizona recently, the governor said he wants to ban AR-15s. Yeah. Arizona is predominantly red. Like it is happening in all of these states. And, um, you know, and, and unfortunately, I've heard people that are like, well, is it ever going to end? Are we just going to continue to fight? And we might have to. But I firmly believe that anything worth having is worth fighting for. And I'm yeah. willing to fight for it every year. And also see when your legislative legislative session is. Um, so in Colorado, they have 120 days. It starts from January and then ends May 8th. And May 8th for me is not coming soon enough. So they only have another three weeks to pass any of these bills. And a lot of this takes time. So I'm really hoping that, you know, the clock just runs out on them and then these bills die. Um, but every state is different. So, you know, some states go every other year. Some states are, uh, you know, spread out throughout the year. So really look into that, too, is like when that legislative legislative session takes place, um, because that's when you have to be most active. Yeah. And yeah, key to all this is pay attention. Yeah. Pay attention and then find out what your what your local reps are doing and what they're about. Get to know them. Mm -hmm. Hell, if you have a rep, uh, if you have a somewhat of a relationship with them, how much easier will it be to have that discussion? Yeah. And then also that brings up a really good point, too, is now with elections coming up, um, I know, for example, all the House uh, representatives, they're all up for reelection this year. And then 50 percent of the Senate is. And it's really important that we pay attention to who we're voting for, because so many people get wrapped up into politics at a national level, but they don't pay attention to who they're voting for at a um, yeah. local level. And as a result, now we, I mean, my, you know, Colorado is, is extremely outnumbered by Democrats and it's because we didn't pay attention to who we were voting for. We were just like mass circling, whatever. And we only care about who's going to be president next, but you guys yeah. really need to pay attention. And honestly, with even just like one Google search, see who's Republican, see who's Democrat. I hate to say like, you know, base it on that. But a lot of times, if you don't have time to like really research somebody, a lot of times that helps. That is not to say that every Republican is going to be yep. pro-gun. There's a lot of rhinos out there. But, you know, at that point, maybe they have a little bit more, you know, maybe they're more uh, likely to be persuaded to vote accordingly. Question came up in chat. So is the NRA still in the fight? Or are they uh, more of yeah. a paper, ta uh, paper target? Uh, what's it? Not target. Tiger. Yeah. So the NRA is still, I mean, I just saw this guy, his name's yeah. Travis, and I just saw him when I was testifying against these bills a few, or I'm sorry, a few days ago. Um, he was, he testified remotely via Zoom. So at this point, it's pretty sad, but yeah, the NRA is doing more than GOA and FBC. I'm going to keep my comments to myself on that. Yeah. Because I have a I history mean, of saying things about certain organizations that have a oh, habit no, of- I've they don't do anything, but they yeah, sure taking no. a lot of money. 
Oh, I know. I know. When you look at how, I mean, even Wayne LaPierre, so cool. He's off, he's out, but like, he's still getting a million dollars a year. And who's, who do you think is lining his pockets with that? Yeah. Like at this point, I, I feel very confident saying like, I would not donate to the NRA and the person that took his place is not any better. So even though, I mean, I appreciate the efforts of the NRA. I appreciate this guy, Travis. I think his last name is uh, Love Lady or something. I think it's broken appreciate... legs. Yeah, I know. Um, and I'm just like, gosh, you got to break both legs. And they couldn't even send anybody out in your place. Although I heard this one guy, Clay, something was taking his place. I don't know who he is. I don't recall seeing him, but um, I've been told that he has been there for some. So I'm not going to say, you know, whether or not that is the case, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, but ultimately I think we can't rely on these organizations. Like I said on Colleen Noir's podcast, like us relying on people or thinking that it's not going to happen. We basically have adopted that same mentality as a lot of anti-gun people like, Oh, we don't need a gun because it's not going to happen to us. Or if it yeah. does, we're going to call on the police or somebody to help us. How is it, you know, how's that different from us thinking that this law is not going to pass and we're relying on some other, you know, entity to help us. Yep. Like who would have thought that gun owners would have thought this way? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's sad because I, I have friends that are just kind of uh, rooting for the apocalypse. They want world war eight right now. Just I end know. it all. I know. I mean, as much as I am too, at the end of the day, I would hate for like a civil war to happen because I'm not trying to live in a world where I don't have my high thread count sheets and can't just go down the street and get Chipotle. But, you know, if this is what's going to happen, then it is what it is. At least I'm prepared. I can't say the other, you know, the same for all these people who are anti-gun. Well, the secret to that is stock up on those high thread count sheets. Yeah, I have been. Thank you. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Bamboo is the way to go. <laughs> it's kind of important. <laughs> Actually, yesterday, work in patrol, talk nobody, also on patrol, we were talking about pillows and the importance of investing of a in a pillow. good pillow. Oh, heck yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You get to a certain age where you're like, no, I need nice sheets, nice yes. pillow. Like you are done slumming it. And oh, yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, I, I, I don't work to work. I work to enjoy the mm -hmm. fruits of those labors. And nice things are part of that. Absolutely. Comfort, vacations. Yeah. It's foreign concepts to the, those younger kids. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Kids nowadays. So let's see here. Yeah. So TJ says, uh, I know a lot of younger guys, gun guys that want the power powder keg lit and a third revolution. Yeah. And it's kind of silly. And I, yeah. I, I find that in the, the, the silly gun groups that are low well, intelligence. <clears throat> so no, but here's the thing is like, it's the same thing as people that are like, shall not comply or, yeah. you know, or just move. Like, so you think that we're going to, it's going to be easier to live in a world where, you know, you just pick up and move everything as opposed to fighting it at a local level and right now. Keep or on moving. Yeah. Or you think it's going to be easier to have a civil war than to, and have everything in order and society is still able to, you know, to, to work. And it just like, I, it baffles me. Like that just seems like like, yeah, if it happens, I'm willing to fight, but I would hope that it doesn't happen. That's not what I want. I don't want a civil war. I don't want to have to move. I would rather fight it at a local level right now yeah. and and try to make waves as opposed to it you know, getting worse. Well, uh, that brings up another point that unfortunately, as a police officer, I have to hear frequently. It's that I'm going to be taking everyone's guns. <laughs> no, yeah. you guys are just going to be complying and it's never going yeah. to even reach that. And anyway, yeah, my so. agency won't have anything to do with that. We've had long conversations. I don't think any Absolutely. agency where I live, well, they're not going to take part. That's very, yeah, that's very similar to Colorado. So a lot of the sheriff's departments have come together and they said they will not enforce this. And yeah. even um, during the last assault weapons ban bill uh, testimony for public testimony, um, sheriffs from different counties showed up and they were like, this is not the way, like this is not going to curb violence. Yeah. It's, you know, and, and I was extremely proud and grateful for that. Yeah. So. But if they're not going to enforce it, why does it matter? Because it it lays down a, fa a, a foundation, some groundwork to remove additional rights too. Mm -hmm. It's not just guns. Okay. Now yeah. we can, now freedom of speech is gone. Now freedom of health. Well, fifth and 14th are gone. Good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. But 
All right. So well, May is when that's done. So you May, can stop May trolling people. May is not coming soon enough. And I feel like I'm going to take the biggest vacation. Actually, I'm probably not because stupidly, I'm probably going to go to the NRA show, uh, the NRA annual meetings, but I'm not going to support the NRA. I'm not an NRA member. Um, I'm just going to support the companies that support me because I do yeah. have a lot of great sponsors that are still backing me and fighting my efforts and, or, you know, helping me fight these efforts and I appreciate yeah. them. So I will be that, be there for that. But then after that, I think I'm going to take a really big vacation where I'm just sitting on a beach and just drinking like a huge pina colada. And I don't have to think about anything <laughs> except for peaches. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so exactly. My favorite thing that I say at the end of every single episode is mm -hmm. make sure you support, make sure you support those sources that you have found to be beneficial. What I mean by that is if you like what Ava said, she's going to tell you where you can find her and her, her sponsors and things like that. If you like what she said, you're probably going to want to find her on social media. You're probably going to want to find her on whatever app application, whatever she's on, um, it's not only fans, by the way. <laughs> oh, and <laughs> likes always help. Shares yeah. especially help. Subscriptions and following helps because these algorithms are not working in any of our favors. Mm -hmm. When when I'm on uh, when I'm on Facebook, I know for a fact I have a shadow ban on a lot of pretty much everything I do. Same with everything YouTube. That's where you, the listener, the viewer, helps because those algorithms aren't helping us. So if the, if you found this episode to be helpful. Well, first off, you need to be hitting like, so I'll give you a second for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that you hit like, thank you. Um, you'll share this, and then when Ava shares something that you really like, you probably need to be sharing it, um, because this is how we spread the word. Mm -hmm. There's a good possibility there are things that you, the viewer, are seeing or hearing that your friends aren't. And so this is the way you can help with some community outreach. If you're not going to go and talk to your local politicians or attend any sessions, at least share good information to help further these causes. So with that, Matt, I can't talk <laughs> with that in mind, Ava, what are your final thoughts and any plugs you want to, you want to throw in there? Sure. Well, thank you so much for having me. I do Anytime. appreciate it. Appreciate you giving me your platform to voice, you know, the word and, uh, and I mean, the biggest advice that I can give you guys is just don't be complacent. We need, yeah. you know, we need all hands on deck. There's power in numbers. Gunners make up more than 50% of the United States. So we're not outnumbered by any means. We just need to actually, you know, stand up and, and uh, you know, fight the fight, yep. um, you know, politely be, you know, be classy Actually, about yeah, it. yeah. There's something um, to be said for that. Yeah. And then my handle, so on Instagram, I'm so shadow banned. So it's Ava Flannel underscore. But before you guys go and put that in, it's the only one with the picture. And I'm going to spell that for you because think people think that my last name is Flannel. It is not. So one A -V -A, for yes, A-V-A, F as in Frank, L-A-N-E-L-L. -L -L. So that's one, uh, one N, two L's, and then underscore. And it's the only one with the picture you should not have to request to follow me on there. If you are having a hard time, just go to gunfunny.com and my handles are every there or everything there. Um, I can't talk anymore. My handles are there uh, as well as like my YouTube channel, my podcast. Also, don't forget to contact those senators. That helps greatly. That's also at gunfunny.com. And, uh, and yeah, I appreciate you having me on and I appreciate anyone who's listening. For those who disagree with me, it is what it is. I don't care, but don't get my way to fight the fight. And you know, because I feel like I'm definitely making some waves and you guys aren't really doing much to, to help the cause. <laughs> what about uh, sponsors? Uh, sponsors. So I have a bunch of sponsors, uh, like Six Hour Rose, Federal Premium, IWI, um, Mantis, um, all these people. Yeah. <laughs> um, of course, I'm like drawing a blank, but I've I been very fortunate is. to have a lot of companies um, stand by me, excess sites, Gators, I pro, and a lot of them have personally reached out and just said, Hey, we really appreciate what you're doing. So Gators, I had some Gators. They were awesome. And I learned about to, them at, Darcy. you know what? I'll have to send you a pair. I, oh, I, had, I, I still have a pair. They're awesome. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. All right. Oh, Cause they're... I'm like, they may not, they might, 
they might be okay with me sending you a pair, but yeah, they are hands down. They're, they're phenomenal. Yeah. Actually, if you guys want to use the code to save 15% gators, G A T O R Z.com forward slash Ava one five. And they're just, they're great. You're not going to have to replace them. Yeah. Or and low profile, good, heavy yeah, duty quality. Yeah. Metal. They're yeah. Cool. Yeah. I learned about them at Darcy. My favorite nice. place to train. Nice. Cool. So big thanks to Ava for the discussion. Big thanks to the, you, the, the viewer or the listener. Also, big mm -hmm. thank you to our sponsors, Big Tech's Ordnance, Lucky Gunner, Overwatch Precision, Filster, Primary Arms, Walther. Lastly, the Patreon subscribers. Without your support, we wouldn't be able to do this on a regular basis. Uh, I have been able to do these weekly. I'll probably do another one this week just so I can be ahead just a little bit. This episode will probably be released very quickly uh, since I was away for the last couple of weeks. I wasn't able to get a couple. I wasn't able to get enough episodes in or uh, recorded to... Uh, to give me a buffer. So this one probably is going to be released tomorrow. I'll probably be releasing the audio as soon as it gets done processing. Um, I still do have several episodes in the hopper. Unfortunately, uh, the, putting these together, it's like herding cats. Yeah. Ava, do you have an issue with finding topics and then no, assembling don't people? Me, don't <laughs> yes, it sucks. <laughs> Absolutely sucks. And, and I recently had a conversation with some friends about how, you know, we can only talk about AR-15 so much. Yeah. Because it gets so, oh man, it gets so redundant. And yeah. so talking about concepts, talking about rights, talking about intangibles is for me so much more interesting. Um, mm -hmm. And then to share ideas is so much more interesting than, oh, what gas block are you using? Yeah. Uh, who cares? Well, there, yeah, there's a time and a place. I'm burnt yeah. out on that. So I yeah, still have uh, more episodes coming up. Uh, probably going to have one with Mike Lewis with his new book. I think that's all. I can't think of anything else. I, and, I, oh, and I have to threaten you with the fact that you will be coming back. I've been trying to get you on this for a while. I know, but you lost me when you were like, yeah, we've done podcasts that were three hours. I'm like three hours. I have a oh, life. <laughs> not only that, but in the evening too, because you go to bed yeah. at 5 p.m. So. I do not go to bed at 5 p.m. I like to relax. Like I've dealt with so much stuff already. This is my second podcast for the day. And you don't and have a third? It is only, yeah. That's why I was like, can you just let me go right now so I can maybe eat lunch before my third podcast or third show? But it is, it's like nonstop. And I mean, at this point, I'm just trying to get the word out and yeah. get people involved because obviously time is not working in our favor. Or maybe yeah. it is, you know, if they, they don't pass this before True. May 8th. But still, we just, you know. But yeah, it's it's just at night, I just want to relax and like maybe have a glass of wine and be left alone. So <laughs> yeah, for me, it's it's work and then more work. So, <gasps> yeah. You know, well, but yeah, your your yeah. your efforts are definitely appreciated. And I'm happy to to share and do anything I can, can to help you out because you. not enough people are hearing about it and doing enough. And yeah. soon enough, Utah is going to be one of the we're going to be in the, in the same same place. Uh, Salt Lake is is blue. Mm hmm. And so yep, unfortunately. We're, we're slowly turning purple as well. We're all going to, now we all have to move to Wyoming. Yeah. No, I know that's where I'm going to uh, get my guns with the assault weapons ban bill passes. Just saying, but yeah, but cool. all right. Well, well thank thanks. you so much. I appreciate it. And thank you everyone for watching as well. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Just wait, though, the next one, you'll do two hours and then three hours, and then yeah, eventually you'll make it to those 10-hour <laughs> marathons. Baby steps. <laughs>